Next, we will show you how to create a G3 Freebone Actor in two ways. So, in this tutorial, I will create a G3 Actor with the Connect Bone tool, which helps you build a bone structure inside of Crazy Talk Animator 3. So the first thing we need to do is obviously we're going to go to Photoshop here and um, you can use other software too. It's That's not important which one you use. You just have to make sure that you have your image like that and that you can save it in a PSD file in one layer. So here I have my fish layer image and I'm going to save this as a fish.psd file. I'm going to click OK and we're going to bring this into Crazy Talk Animator 3. Um, make sure, obviously, that you're, that you're using the pipeline version of the software. So I'm going to open my fish PSD here, and we're going to start adding in some bones to start animating it. So straight off the bat, when you first bring this in, you'll notice that uh, you only have one layer. You only have um, the root, and this root has one bone point, which is that little dot that you see in the middle. Well, this is allocated because of the image. So the entire image, the entire image layer that we have has one bone and it's right in the middle. And it obviously has the same name as the layer that we brought in. So we have that image layer and you can see my bone here called fish. All right. So if we want to animate this character, with uh, the files that we have, we need to add bones to it. We need to have um, proper nomenclature and the proper amount of bones. So I'm going to drag this bone here with the bone editor, and I'm going to add six bones inside. I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, and there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that correct? One, two, three, four, five. Five, I'm sorry. That's the amount of bones that I need. And I can preview and move these, this around. Now, it's important to have, um, you know, these bones here because we're going to use some of the motion files. So for these motion files, I need to have the same amount of bones. So here I have up to five extensions and six points. So I'm going to go into motion, G3 spine, and to special. And I'm going to add one of these motion files. Again, it has six bones and five segments. And you'll see that the animation looks beautiful, right? It looks nice. But the head is a bit static. And the reason is because the bone, the original bone, does not have the same nomenclature as the one, the bo uh, as the one that the f uh, motion file has. This is called fish here. But I need this to be called bone underscore one, just like in this image here. I was animating another penguin file, and you'll see it has bone underscore one for that first uh, bone at the beginning. So mine, obviously, was called fish. So I'm going to re rename this bone underscore one. And now this follows the same nomenclature as the motion file, and we will be able to use it seamlessly. So let's just drag and drop, and now you can see that motion playing. All right, and you see that those transform that transform data that was added to that first bone is also being played with that motion file, and I can add other ones too. All right, so it's very important for you to follow not just the the number of bones, but also the name the naming of the bones that we have. So that you save a ton of time when you use these motion files, obviously. This is a sample of creating a G3 actor with a single image. And in the next sample, we're going to show you how to create an actor with multi-layers. So I'm going to do the same thing with this character that we have, this beautiful zombie character. Now, this is very cool. And, you know, it's amazing to think that this was all, all image, uh, animated from one single image. So I'm going to show you how to add these parts um, individually and how to tie them together with the bones. So I have my character here. It has up to six different body sprites for the arms, the thighs. Let me turn them off. We've got the thigh. We've got the right arm. We've got the torso. We have the head and then the thigh and the other arm. So we're going to bring this in uh, and we're going to add bones inside uh, Crazy Talk Animator 3. So I'm going to save this as my zombie PSD. Let me just overwrite it. And we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to go back into Animator 3 and go back to stage. And let's Control N or just open a new project here. Get rid of that one there. 
and import my zombie. So let's create G3 Freebone Actor, import our source file right there. And we're good. Immediately you see that we have six bones inside. This is because of all the layers. Each image layer has its own bone that's, that's uh, assigned to it. And each bone will be right in the middle of each image. Okay. So it might look a bit confusing here, but if I turn some of these off, you will be able to see them better. I'm going to do that in just in a second here. So notice each image has a bone right in the center of that image. Okay, and we need to relocate that initial bone. So it's very, very simple. The way we do this is obviously um, we want to focus on each later at, at a time. So let me collapse the list here. And I'm going to turn these off. And I'm going to do each layer one at a time. So let's start with the left arm. And let's move that bone. Let's go to transform bone here. Open the transform uh, bone tool. And now I can drag that initial bone to the pivot, to where I want my shoulder to pivot my arm. Okay. And I can preview this if I'd like. And you'll see that's exactly where we'll, the, the pivot point will be for my, for my arm. Turn that off and do the same for the left thigh. So let's grab that bone. It's in the middle of the image, as I mentioned. Let's grab that bone, transform, and drag it to where we want it to meet the hip in the upper thigh. All right, that's where it's going to rotate. And let's do the rest. Uh, the head here. Transform, connect it with the neck. Yes, about the that's a, around, around the position of the neck. Uh, let's do the rest here. You might want to turn some of these off so it's not confusing. Let's start the initial po uh, bone here at the hip, and we're going to merge that later on. Uh, the arm with the shoulder, and then the thigh with the upper hip. And right there. Good. So we're going to connect all these bones together. So let me unhide all. And it might look a bit complicated, but it's actually very, very simple. Just keep in mind each bone with each layer that it's that is managing it. Like that as a torso. Can use the hind leg and the front leg. Okay. So be very careful with these bones and we're going to start connecting these. Once you start seeing the, the structure that we build, you'll notice that it's very, very simple to follow. Okay, so let's turn the preview one off and let's start putting these bones together. So I'm going to go into the bone editor on the left, that bone editor tool. This allows us to add bones and obviously I can connect bones together. So I want to start with the hip here, which is where the, I only turn all of these off just so that we don't get confused. I'm going to work on the upper body first. And let's start with the hip bone here. I'm going to add a bone and I'm going to select, add, go to the clavicle and this will be the neck. Um, if you make any mistake, just, you know, undo. Let's do it again. Connect bone, connect, go to the clavicle neck area there, right about there. And then connect this with the neck and the head. And then another bone to the top of the head. And I can preview this. I can see my head and my torso, they're connected now and they move together. So they have the, if I move one, the other one will react to that movement. So let's connect the right one and the left arm too. So let's do bones here. I am going to connect with a clavicle bone, this one here, to my right shoulder, elbow, the wrist, and then the finger and let it go. And then we can preview that and you'll see that it moves with it. Awesome. And the arm moves independently too. Very good. So you're following, right? Let's add another bone, clavicle, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and tips of the toe uh, of the fingers. Now, if I move the torso, everything will follow because it's connected. And of course, each individual limb will have its movement too. Now, this is pretty cool here. Great. So what else do we do? Well, we have to connect this upper part to the lower part, right? So let's go for the thigh. I'm going to do the right thigh here. And we have uh, that bone, that initial bone that we want to connect to the hip. So the hip and then all the way down. So let's select the hip, connect to that bone, and then the knee, 
the ankle and the toes and let that go. I can preview this. Very nice. And the last one, we're going to do the other left thigh in the back. So be very careful when you select these uh, these bones here. It can be a bit confusing. Just try to remember where we put them together. There we go. Knee, ankle, and toe. And we are done, I think. Yes, I can preview this. And you'll notice that each limb moves independently. And if I move the torso, obviously they will all follow suit because they're connected to the main root bone that we had in our hip. Okay. Now this is going to look very, very cool. All right. So let me turn off the preview here. And we are going to go back to the stage at this point, I believe. Um, so in this stage, what, what I'm gonna, going to do is that I'm going to start adding uh, different keyframes to each specific limb. I'm going to create, I can create the entire movement by creating these keyframes inside the timeline. So let's do just that. So remember, this is a custom character. So it has the specific, a specific number of bones that I made um, independently. And I can turn the t 2D motion key editor here and you can see all the bone layers inside and I can select them specifically. This is the right hand bone here. And obviously I can keyframe these if I like. I can reposition any of the hands or any of the limbs as long as they have bones. And I can keyframe these if I like. If I don't wish to do that and I, I can reset all and this will you know start from scratch. I can realign everything to the initial position. So let me go to the timeline here with uh, the F3 key. And I'm going to move the time scrub forward because I want to set a keyframe. I'm going to lock the feet also. Lock selected bones for the feet because I only want to move the torso. I want to create sort of a, a little jump animation here. Sort of like an anticipation, like he's about to, to, to bounce. Okay, so I could reposition the arm here, the left arm, and I'm going to do the same with the right arm. And let me move the torso down and forward a bit. I want to give him this little jump motion here. And you'll see as soon as I close that, we have keyframes that were set at time 20. You see that little dot there? And I can play this back. And that keyframe is governing that motion that we embedded into our character. Well, we haven't embedded it yet. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. So because this is a keyframe, I can choose uh, transition curves. These can be different. I can have an end in a bounce. I can have a sudden start with elastic end or a shutter start, pause and move. I can gain momentum. So you get the idea, right? Um, I can also drag that keyframe forward in time if I want that movement to extend a bit, if I want to make it a bit slower. So let's see. All right, so I have this keyframe and I'm gonna add that motion to my action uh, menu. Uh, and this is done very simply by opening the collect clip, clip track and dragging inside the area of what you wish to collect as a clip. I'm gonna right click here and I'm going to add to motion uh, to the action menu. If I transfer to action menu, it'll just save it in my content manager, but I want to add it to the action menu of my character. So by doing this, I will be able to um, use that motion later on in the future with the right click menu. So you'll see that since I saved it, the motion, the keyframe is no longer there, but if I right click, I'll find it inside the action menu and it's called action number one and I can click on it and you'll see that that motion clip has been added to the timeline complete with the uh, the, the, the transition curve that we had. I can extend this, I can copy paste them, or I can extend it like I did before in order to make my motion um, be faster or slower. And if I wanna reset everything, I just reset speed and I'll have the original motion that we saved. Okay, likewise, just like we have the transition curve, we have a time warp for motion clips. So the transition curve is basically for um, the keyframes and the time warp is for the entire motion clip. So you can choose what type of movement you wish that motion clip to have. We can choose this stuttering start and end. All right. So we have that embedded motion already. 
we have our character. And obviously, if we have a little more time, um, I can start keyframing everything else from my left foot and my arms and my head. And I can create my very own animation, just like they ha we have this full, fully animated zombie character here. But at least you have the basics and you have an idea how to do that. All right, so we hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, stay tuned for more tutorials that we're going to have for Crazy Talk Animator 3. Thank you.